would you look at the size of that thing? The wheels alone are up to your man's armpits. I wonder why it needs to be so big. Well, guess what? If you read the story in Contact magazine, you will find out why that vehicle is so darn big. So anyway, let's get on with uh, laying this spread out. You might get a gist of it from the layout, but uh, if you want to really read what's going on with this vehicle, check out the latest issue of Contact Magazine. So at this stage, and you can thank me later, I have already gone ahead and started to lay this out. I have written the story. It took me about four, maybe five hours to write this story. A lot of research I had to go into it, Googling that is. And then I've just thrown the words onto the pages. These are not properly laid out yet. They're just thrown in place to see how they might flow and how many pages this rather large story might need. In the end, I allocated eight pages to this story. Uh, I think it was quite worth it. The photos are very strong photos. Uh, the words, I was very happy with myself. Uh, Rosie, when she proofread the story, she said it was very entertaining. Uh, and for me, that's one of the big gauges. If Rosie likes the story, then I think the audience will like the story. In fact, starting a little bit earlier, if I like the story, I think my audience will like it. And then the second gauge is when Rosie gets to proofread it. And if she says it's good, then I think it's pretty good. Now, I'm messing about with this photo here to give it some impact. It's a big vehicle, big photo, and I wanted to create a good bit of impact on the spread. But obviously, words have to go on the page as well. So I'm uh, fiddling with the size and shape of the box that I'm putting the photo into to get the maximum impact out of this photo but leaving plenty of room for words on the page at the same time. It's always a balancing act to lay out, laying out a page. You know, you've got words and you've got photos and when the photos are so good you like to give them a big space but then you need to leave space for the words as well. Uh, and if you make bigger photos, you have to have less words. And if you have more fo more words, then you've got to reduce the size of the photos. So it's a balancing act always. You can also add more pages, but then it gets ridiculous if you add too many pages. Um, so it's all a big juggling act is what I'm trying to say. Now let's get back to the words for a minute. You'll see the red X, uh, sorry, red plus sign at the bottom of that box. That means there's more text available. And if I click on that red plus sign and draw a new box, the text that is in the whole story flows into that next new box. Anyway, there's a lot to get through here in this spread. The spread ran to eight pages in the end with quite a good selection of photos. And I also spent quite a bit of time on the main photo, which you'll see a bit later on. There was also a bit of labeling on the technical photos, which was um, interesting. I did make an error initially, but luckily I spotted, I spotted my error and fixed it before it was finished. So that saved embarrassment, of course. Uh, anyway, I won't wrap it on too much over this. I will press the magic fast forward button and just fly on through this.
was the error I made there. It was a case of not so much making an assumption as just not thinking about it really. But I did realize my error later on and came back to it. And I'll tell you all about it when I come back to fix it in just a few minutes. Yeah, so right about now a little alarm bell starts going off in my head. That looks like a tranny up front and the engine is behind it. And that makes sense of course, but there you go. I just didn't really think about it when I was putting labels on things. But rather than just take my own word for it, I went and did quite an extensive Google search to find out or try and confirm that the engine is in fact behind the transmission and it is so a quick relabeling of those two photos adding some extra detail that I found along the way hopefully saved myself some embarrassment and again showed contact as a reliable source of information and it's the little details that count of course you know I've done some quite a bit of Google searching just to get this caption right and having found the extra information here, there and everywhere it's uh, good to bring it all together in one location i.e. the pages of Contact Magazine. I'm settling in now to about half an hour's worth of delicate fiddling with the words to get the balance right, eliminating widows and orphans, which I've discussed before, adding a headline or two, making it look pretty, making everything flow around these photos that I've now got on the pages, and generally cleaning it up. It's also my final proofread of this uh, story as well. And having proofread this myself, my own words, uh, I may have missed some things. So Rosie comes along at the end of the process and she proofreads the whole magazine, top to bottom, which uh, includes the story, of course. And uh, she will pick up some errors that I've made in the text. And I'm talking here about spelling errors and grammar and stuff. Uh, obviously, she's not as as across the technical things as I am but in the end I think we've put out a pretty good product that's a team effort between Rosie and myself with these captions there's a lot of uh, backwards and forwards to websites to make sure I've got the caption right to make sure I've named the photographer properly credit for credit too
jiggery pokery in Photoshop to get my intro spread for this story sorted out. This is actually the third attempt I've had at this um, arrangement. I didn't like the previous two. So this is the one I finally settled on. Uh, what I'm doing here is isolating the sky in the background. Uh, so I can put some words actually behind the two vehicles. Uh, with the words, does size matter? That's the headline. And I thought, wouldn't it be interesting to make them into sort of like clouds? So I've um, softened those two words there to make them like wispy clouds. And then the word matters in the background goes behind the tanks. And of course, we're talking about size, so make it big, man, make it big. Um, I probably could have made the space between the or and the question mark a bit smaller, but in hindsight, it'll do. So that's another spread down. In the end, I think it took me close to five hours to write the story and then maybe four and a half to lay it out on the pages, but I'm quite happy with it. I hope you liked it too. If you haven't read it yet, check out Contact Magazine on our website, militarycontact.com.